In this video, I will demonstrate how to spot syntax errors, how to interpret error messages and how to fix those errors. Let me first explain what a syntax error is. Delphi is a strict language. It has grammar rules like any spoken language, like English, Afrikaans or French. The computer also has its own native language. In its rawest form, a computer language is a bunch of ones and zeros called binary code. When you write code for a Delphi program, you must follow Delphi's language rules. Just like you follow language rules or grammar in English. English is not my native language, so I may have made a few language mistakes in this course. But our brains are smart enough to correct those mistakes, and infer the correct meaning of our language mistakes. However, a computer is not so smart. A computer will not make any inferences or guesses when you make language mistakes. When you run your application to test it, you are handing your code over to Delphi's compiler for translation. The compiler is the translator that must interpret or translate the Delphi language into a native language that computers understand. If you made errors in your code like spelling mistakes, or you forgot to end your instructions with a semicolon, Delphi will complain by producing syntax errors. That is Delphi's way to tell you to fix the mistake because it cannot translate it. To demonstrate syntax errors, I will use the contact information program again. The last time we ran this program, we didn't get any errors. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I made changes in the code. I deliberately made a few mistakes in the code to show you how you can identify and fix syntax errors. You will see a ton of errors the first time I run this program. I will demonstrate how to identify, interpret and fix one error at a time until my program runs without errors. Before I run the application, let's quickly scroll through the code. Just a quick glance at this code tells me that Delphi is very unhappy with me. We see many of these red squigglies underneath some of the words and phrases. That is because many of our mistakes can be picked up by Delphi before we even run our program. If Delphi can identify a mistake immediately, it is underlined with a red squiggly. You can just hover your mouse over one of these mistakes and Delphi will show you a yellow text block with a description of the error. For example, if I move my mouse over this error, Delphi shows me the message T rich edit does not contain a member named color. The compiler doesn't recognize the word color for this component. Delphi was created in the USA, so it uses US English words. The American spelling of the word color is different than the British spelling of color. The American spelling of color is C-O-L-O-R. Here I spelled it C-O-L-O-U-R. Now let me give you a tip. Most errors occur because we either misspell a word or because we use a word that is not recognized by Delphi in that specific context. I could have avoided this error if I used Delphi's features that provides assistance while I'm typing my code. When I typed the dot, Delphi presented this list of available items or members for RED output. I then could have used the color property in the list, which uses the American spelling of the word color. I'm going to rectify this error by selecting the proper color property. Now the red squiggly is gone. That means that the error was fixed. You can try and fix all your errors this way, but let me also show you another way. I run my project. And Delphi shows an error message. It also tells me that I have a total of 12 errors in my code. If I click the OK button, Delphi highlights the first line with an error. Now, this is important to remember. The compiler reads your code from top to bottom, line by line. When you have multiple errors in your code, the first occurrence of an error will be highlighted, with this ugly red line. That doesn't mean that you have only one error in your code. There may be many. Here in the messages pane, we see that I actually have a bunch of errors. These error messages are also listed from top to bottom, as they were picked up by the compiler. I prefer to handle multiple errors in the order that they are given to me. In other words, also from top to bottom. You can however jump to a specific error randomly by double clicking the error message here in the messages pane. I'm going to start at the first error. The first message reads, Undeclared identifier email. This message tells me that Delphi doesn't recognize something. In this case, I do not have an object with the name email. We are using an edit to capture an email address. If I used the code completion features provided by Delphi, I could have prevented this error. 
Firstly, when I typed the dot, I would have received a list of items if email was a valid object. In this case, I did not get a list, so email must be wrong. Secondly, when I started typing the name, I could have used my control and space keys together to see if the name is listed. Here, we see that the name email is not listed. Thirdly, if I stuck to the naming convention that I learned in Unit 7.1 and 7.2, I would have known to start the name with EDT, because all my object starts with prefixes. If I started with EDT, I would have seen all the components with the name starting with EDT. I then could have selected the name from the list, or just type one more character, in this case an E, to see that the correct name of the email edit is EDT email. I'm going to select the correct name from the list to rectify this error. When I run my project now, I will still get errors. The good news is that I have one less error. Delphi only reports 11 errors this time. This statement was fixed, now I can continue with the next problem. The message at the top of the message pane now reads, incompatible types, integer and string. We've seen similar errors before. This means that we are trying to pass a string value to an integer. Here on the red line we see that the number 20 is enclosed in inverted commas. In other words, it is not really a number, it is a string. The value property of the spin edit can only accept integers. So we must remove the inverted comma to make 20 a number. You can now run the application again to remove the message. Or you can just continue handling the list of messages, one by one. To save some time, I'm going to continue with the next error message. First, I will double click on the message to pinpoint the statement. Our next message reads, undeclared identifier, yellow. The name yellow is not recognized by the Delphi compiler. Colors in Delphi starts with a CL prefix, like CL red, CL white and CL yellow. Again, I could have prevented this error if I used the code assistance provided by Delphi. If I typed CLY and used my control and space keys together, I would have received the proper name for the color. The next error reads, unterminated string. I opened this phrase with an inverted comma, but here at the end of the phrase I didn't type a closing inverted comma. If we look at all my code here, we see all these blue words and phrases. This is Delphi's way to make the code more readable. The inverted commas indicates to the compiler where to start and end literal string values. Everywhere else, we also see that the semicolons that serve as statement terminators are black. However, on this line, the semicolon is blue because it is seen as part of the phrase. That is because the string is not closed with an inverted comma. The compiler will not know that this statement must terminate when reading the semicolon. To fix this problem, just add an inverted comma. Now, the semicolon changed from blue to black, and the compiler sees it as a line terminator now. The next error reads, missing operator or semicolon. If we go and analyze the red line, we will find nothing wrong with it. When we ran the program, Delphi didn't make any assumptions about your code. As I explained, our previous error didn't have a line terminator because the semicolon was seen as a character in a string. So, Delphi saw this line as part of the previous statement because he didn't find the semicolon that ends the previous line. Because we fixed the previous error, this one is automatically fixed. So we can move on to the next message. The next error reads, cannot access protected symbol tcontrol.txt. A button doesn't have a text property, it has a caption. I could have avoided this problem, because the text property is not displayed as one of the available members for this button. However, the caption property is listed. To fix the problem, I select caption from the list. Before I go any further, I will quickly run my project again. I only have 6 errors left over. The next message reads, unknown directive, tfrm contact. In Unit 8.1, you learned that your code must be typed in special blocks called Event Handlers. Event Handlers start with the word Procedure, and Event Handlers have Begin and End statements. You must type your instructions between the Begin and End statements. The Begin statement tells the compiler where the procedures start. 
and the end statement indicates where all the instructions finish for a particular procedure. When you accidentally remove an end statement, the compiler will not know when to stop execution for a specific procedure. And if you do have code after that procedure, the compiler thinks that it must continue with those statements too. So the compiler expects instructions until it finds an end statement. In this case, the end statement was removed from the previous event handler. Therefore, the compiler continues reading and it doesn't find any more instructions. Instead, it finds another procedure header and that causes the problem. Every now and again, you are going to encounter a single mistake that causes Delphi to complain many times. It reminds me of some people I know. This is one of those errors. All these messages are shown to us because we do not have an end statement in the previous procedure. To fix these problems, just add an end statement, followed by a semicolon. All these problems will now also be solved. Let me show you. When I run my program now, I have an error-free application and I can continue using it. I hope this demonstration helps to understand how to identify, interpret and fix errors. You can now also go and make a few deliberate mistakes in your code and practice the techniques you've learned here. In the next video, I will demonstrate how you can make your code more readable for yourself, your teammates or your teacher. I'll talk to you again in the next video.